it's moving. It's moving. Yep. Um, so everyone's going to interpret what they're seeing slightly differently, right. but like any like any scientist might. Um, but we try to you know have a, a, a common thread of yeah. objectives that we accomplish across the dive. I've never seen one move before. That was. Oh, yeah. yeah, they can they can go into full on swimming mode too. I, I was gonna oh, say, just I'd wait love till they fly. To see that. <laughs> I think I've seen footage of it long ago, but the California Academy of Science in um, San Francisco has uh, cranoids on exhibit. Uh -huh. oh, cool. Next time we're up there. Oh, look at them. They're beautiful. Look, they oh. go. It's waving at you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stretch, yeah. stretching maneuver. <laughs> very, very odd behavior. Uh, <laughs> it's just saying hi, yeah. gosh. <laughs> Hopefully we're not on camera this time. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> 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 the crinoid wave. Have you heard the, uh, the lobster wave. squat up there? <laughs> lobster squat. <laughs> yeah, Steve's going to lead us in a round do you wanna, of exercise. Uh, do you want to demonstrate it the lobster the squat, point of the, watch. <laughs> the new yoga move. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I heard waypoint. Is that a work conversation? Mm -hmm. No? Wait, what? I, I heard, heard lobster waypoint. squat. Good for Zoom. Uh -huh. oh. Nice little outcrop here. <laughs> That's nice. Here you still can. Mm. Wow, beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah, hold it there. Right there. Do we want to stop here any longer? Otherwise, I'm going to put another no, move. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're Keep just moving. trying to line up and focus. Good. Okay. It doesn't look Bridge, so, no? so crisp at, as it did yesterday. It looks it like a miniature set from Beetlejuice. Yeah, exactly. Add another three zero meters, one four zero. A miniature set from Beetlejuice? Yeah, have you ever seen Beetlejuice? Just once in my life, yes. But That's I'm enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's plenty. That's a great movie. <laughs> it is. I'm trying to remember where it, where it looked like coral. And Beetlejuice. If they had to remake Beetlejuice in 2024, who would play Beetlejuice? Oh my gosh. Wow. It's a good question. Tall order. Yeah. I feel like. What's his name that played Joker in Suicide Squad that was like Jared Leto? <laughs> I feel like he's crazy enough to play <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> Just maybe. I love Jared Leto for that role. Yeah. That's very cool. You heard it here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have our people call their people. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be set in the deep sea. <laughs> Aqua Beetlejuice. Uh, I don't know. I think I think that movie can only be made subaerially. <laughs> uh, I knew it was. You know, for someone you know, who really shut it down early on in the day. <laughs> I felt the Tora coming, but I didn't know it was quite like Oh, squatting. Direction. Squat lobster. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> the age old rivalry between Oof. geology and biology I, continues. Uh, I am in a little hostile environment here. <laughs> Subaerial environment? <laughs> you created it for yourself, All Steve. Right, I was forced. <laughs> <laughs> Fish up top. If you keep uh, stealing the jokes, a maybe fish. submarine. I haven't seen left. a fish in a while. Yeah. I missed it. I just caught the tail end of it in the um, <laughs> literal tail end. Yeah, yeah. The triclops. Well. Wow. 
What are these little yellow clumps of coral? Storopathies. Storopathies? Stauro. Stauro. Yeah, Stauropathies. Yeah, a lot of a lot of this uh, Candidella helminthopera species at the fan on the left. This is such a cool view, getting underneath the coral colonies with the uh, triclops because it makes it look like you're actually in a forest or a garden. that camera so much. Oh, they must have changed generators. The vibration stopped again. Mm -hmm. That's such a funny feeling. It's like physical too. Mm -hmm. Is this another uh, anthemasis? Uh, I think it is, yep. Is that a mushroom coral? Yep. Yay, yep. I got it. I'm learning. I think that's right. Next move will be one three zero. I think before I put on the next move, though, I'll let um, Herka have ahead of Atalanta again. I know. <laughs> Just so easy. We can keep the moves going uh, after this. Roger. Okay. We're going to let uh, Hart get ahead of Atalanta again and then put another move. If we don't reach waypoint four, we're going to hear about it. <laughs> Do we need to hit the waypoint, Steve? No. Okay, good. Yeah, points in space. Well, points in the deep sea, but close enough. <laughs> Thanks for the courtesy laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> it was genuine, actually. <laughs> so lumpy. Really nice pillow uh, morphology here. Hello, basalt. Hello, basalt. Nick, I wanted to ask you, okay, so uh, for priorities of like the, the perfect rock, you want one that's datable? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a nice anemone. Drop your one to zero. Hmm. Okay, for zoom. Got distracted. So you want one that's datable. Is there any other um, aspect of the rock that you're really, really looking for? Or strictly just one that you can tell Better. how old it yep, is. I, agree. I mean, I guess it depends on, you know, what, what you're looking at. Um, I know we have some geologists out there that are looking at the chemistry of the ferromanganese crust. Uh, so those deposits might be very valuable for their type of research. Uh, and that can tell you a little bit about uh, the ocean currents, the ocean chemistry. Uh, for our rocks, for geochronological purposes, we're looking for specific uh, mineral phases, um, particularly Plagioclase, feldspar, uh, amphiboles, biotites. Right, 
um, unaltered again. Yeah. Uh, so those are ideal rocks, but uh, you know, just for uh, different purposes, you might have different characteristics that you'd be looking for. Okay, so chemical makeup. Uh, sure. Things. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we could also look at uh, isotope geochemistry uh, to try to uh, uh, lump together um, different hotspot tracks that maybe um, uh, from the same mantle source, same mantle plume. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Hey, Jason. Thanks for tuning in. Christmas tree. Mm. Okay, let's do another move. It'll be one two zero. Bridge, no? Uh three zero meters one two zero, please. One two zero, thanks. Nav copies. Cucumber? Under the lasers? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Bethadides or something similar like that. I love how they're like iridescent. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can do that. You can see its innards. Yep. So cool. They're pretty cohesive on the seafloor, but then when as soon as they get warm, okay. they start to like jellify. Got it. Yeah. They don't they don't hold together very well. Jellify. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Somebody's asking, what are your thoughts on what you are finding down there? Is the amount of life you are seeing what you expected? So uh, personally I'm I'm kinda blown away by how much life we're seeing. Um, I think a lot of times when people think about the deep sea, they expect it to be pretty barren, okay. um, not much life, not much going on. Um, but the more dives I sit on or sit in on, um, the more blown away I am. Uh, some areas it seems like are more diverse than others. Uh, but I don't know if anybody else wants to speak to how if they're blown away by anything that we, we've been seeing so far. The amount of life. There's a megalodicopia right here. Gelatinous uh, predatory tunicate. Oh. Okay, for zoom. So cool. Yeah. It's basically our cousin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Closest thing. Yeah. Just Saw each other at family reunion <laughs> yeah. months ago. This sponge uh, specifically is very closely related yeah it's a it's a it's a tunicate so oh, it's a chordate me, uh -huh. and uh, as chordates they're closely related to well they're in the same group that um, that we are uh, but the only difference is that we're we're vertebrates and this is not this is a non-vertebrate chordate uh, so they start their life with a um, a nerve cord uh, and some of them um, and some of them it's it's lost after they settle or it's reabsorbed into the body so uh, 
What is uh, that to the underneath the laser to the left, Steve? Underneath the laser to the left. It's like a little. Oh yeah, curl. yeah. That's what I wanted to sample before. Um, is there any chance uh, we're in a sampleable spot? Uh, yeah, bridge nav. Okay. Hold position. So, if you can see either in Stillcam or in Zeus, there are a bunch of there's merely really small wiry colonies of black coral, and they all have numerous gastropods on them. And I've seen dozens and dozens of these, and I'm really curious if we might be able to collect one uh, with the snails on them. Uh, the snails won't fall off very easily, but if we can snip uh, one of the snip one of them, uh, so they're all here, but they're very very fine um, in texture uh, and color. Okay, we should get to it if we're gonna do it. So if you zoom here, you'll be able to see it. It's hard to see. Okay, for zoom. And uh, so right here, see this stalk. Oh, okay. Or oh, and there's one there too. Can you? Um, this one looks nicer though. Just pan over a little and center it up and get me a little bit better zoom. There you go. So. Uh, okay, I see. What I would like to collect the whole thing here. Okay. With with all the things on it. Okay, and it'll go in a front box. Uh, yeah, we can put a front box. It's right. Um, if we can cut it as low as possible to the base, that would okay. be ideal. We've seen dozens of these, so it's within our permit. And uh, there's multiple snails on this, so that some of them should stay on. Okay. Uh, go wide video. And Ad Adelanta just stopped, so oh, yeah, awesome. we're good. I mean, this is not a mucousy black coral, um, so mostly stopped. Okay, um, I may need you to guide me back to it again, because uh, yeah. I there's also a small it chance we could disappearing split it, but to we, me. Could, we might lose some rather. Yeah, let's try for here. But we'll get a good zoom on it so we can count how many snails are associated with it. Okay. Okay. I won't sample it until you give the go ahead. Oh no, I, I was I was talking to data. Uh, you can sample when ready. This is one of the most abundant corals of the entire dive. Okay, can you give yeah. me a sense of where it is again? Sure. So is it below you're gonna the cut, jaws? You're going to cut right oh, there. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it's this structure. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, like pilot challenge level eight, eight, I, to, eight yeah, to nine. sample <laughs> something I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's not moving away from you, but yeah. that would be level 10. <laughs> can't see it and it's moving away from you. Yeah, and I'll try to follow you in because it is, it's hiding super well. Yeah, okay, give me more zoom. A little less. I want to see just the wrist there.
That's good. Good job. Nice. It didn't come. Nope. Oh. I think you got it there. Yeah. Nice. That needed. Uh, do you want to try and slurp that, or do you want to box it? What's your preference? Um. What it, it looks like it's not positive, uh, positively buoyant. Yeah. Uh, we can we can try a slurp. I don't think it'll get stuck. Yeah. Uh, I I'm wondering if you may want to try and get another one because not twisting it means that I may have scraped off the associates. Yeah, I, I see something in there. Okay. Um, I'm also fine if if you want to. Yeah, I, the forward box. You know, if you wanted to just toss it somewhere it might be easier but if you're sure not sure it, I, I don't think it's it, it is it's more apt to float but yeah uh, th this is this one's up to you yeah all right let's go into a slurp uh, okay. jar two okay uh, it's on flush now so do you want to run Run the flush at like 30% or something? Yeah. So. Just hit the plus 10. So that's 30 plus. There you you go. just flush it for a couple of seconds. Yeah, and yeah. then you can press zero. And then do your sample jar. I think it's going to be reversed to get you to jar two. There you go. Leave it there. Oh. Um, and look down at the slurp hose. And then we do it at like 40 or? We, yeah, we can start at 30 and see what happens. Okay. That's you at 30%. Okay. Um, can you actually uh, go to zero percent and then pick up and just hover? The uh, snorkel is just stuffed into a rock. Yes. All right, coming up. Lovely. Yeah, just go all your autos there. So I'm going to call this one. Uh, Dicopathies in big quotes um, with gastropod associate. And this will be sample 63, right? Yep. Okay. Somebody's wondering about the size of the claw oh, that Hercules uses. That's okay. Uh, so. Okay, you can go 30%. Uh, um, well, I'll get close uh, before you start that. Because uh, it'll rob your, your thrust power. So specifically, they were wondering about the size. I'd say that it, the claw itself is maybe about a foot, 10 inches to a foot. Okay, can go for 30. Okay, you're at 30%. Can you go up higher? Yep. And then maybe give me a little bit more of a view, like a oh, zoom. Yeah, sure. Sorry. I might be above it. Oh, that's great. Perfect. Just like that. Uh, l just a little more? Yeah. There we go. All right.
good. It's in oh, the box. It's in, good. Nice. in the jar. Right. And I, section. I do see some, some snails, possibly, at least two. So good overall. And then I'll switch oh, yeah. Here. And okay. then go back to, yeah, go back to, uh, it'll be jar forward. It'll get you there faster and go back to flush. Okay. Which one? Oh uh, yeah, the red one is red flush. Okay. okay. So Hercules has um, several different types of sampling methods uh, attached to the ROV. So there is the uh, claw to pick up rocks and sample those. There's a coral cutter. I don't know if you were able to see that um, on the sample that we just took. So it's able to cut the coral and then kind of like gently hold it while it places it where it needs to go. There's also the slurp. So if we just want to slurp something up into some jars, we can do that with Hercules. And there are different um, different storage areas with it, that are on the ROV to help bring up samples. What's that? Oh, uh, the rightmost one. You don't have a label on it. There you go. Whoosh. Science, anything else in this area we want to collect? Um, I don't think so. No, yeah. I think we're good. Carry okay. on. I'll let Herc get in front of uh, Atalanta again and then put it in a move. And you're thinking zero, uh, one, two, zero? Uh, yeah, I think we can continue with that I yeah if you're happy with that I think we can do another one of those Atalanta is at one two zero right now and seems to be seeing the slope yep. almost right out in front Perfect. for a ways to go so Looks like we're coming up on a towels field here. Are you interested in collecting any uh, items I, from this towels field? I am, actually. <laughs> just <laughs> items. Just, uh, you know, if we happen across an yeah. item. Yeah. I'll hold on that move. <laughs> All right. We kind of go back down to this area. Okay. Logan, are we able to show on video three the jars um, when we slurp? Yeah, we just need to turn that camera on because it's oh, on okay. port right now. No problem. Can we switch to bio and then I'll throw it up? Uh, the camera's on. Okay, beautiful. It's a it's a star. It switches with a starboard cam. This, oh. Maybe this little area over here. Okay. 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 There you go, Brittany. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I don't know if we can really see anything in that jar, uh, particularly right now, but for our viewers watching, when we do a slurp, this is where those samples go. I, I don't know how many jars we have in total. Looks like at least. We four. have seven seven sample jars okay. and then an eighth one, which is the one you're looking at. That's the one um, that we basically rinse out the tube with. It's called the flush jar. Um, yeah, so we run, run the suction sampler with that jar in place to make sure there's nothing that's going to contaminate the sample. And then we actually turn to the sample jar that we're going to put the sample into. Cool. We have a few potential candidates over here. Uh, you want to circle some for me? There's one. Uh, okay. Maybe this one here. I don't want to go too large, but uh, what do we have for space, Steve? Uh, we have lots of space on okay. the starboard box and the small compartments, so those are perfect size.
Okay, I'm sorry, Nick. Can you circle one again sure. for me? Yeah, no problem. Um, I think this one might be ideal. This one might be ideal. Just whatever is easiest for you. Can you give me a zoom video? I can. So it seems like oh, how did I pick the one that isn't that's <laughs> attached? <laughs> that's ridiculous. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, that one's attached, but the one next to it isn't. Yeah, okay. that one might be too large. That big black yeah. slab. Uh, that, I don't know. That's pretty small. That's too small? I think so, yeah. That's a little bit less than 10 centimeters. Um, Would it be possible to try this over here? Yeah, what about this this one here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's that one's a good deal oh, here. Yeah. It also looks like a little bit like I chipped some off. Hmm. Can you get me a bit of a zoom? Yep, sorry, I once I had a recording error. So Steve, when we first started this dive yesterday, was that last night? Yeah, it was. Um, it seemed like when we hit the bottom of this seamount, there were more animals that were like mobile. Like there were fish and there were hermit crabs and sea cucumbers. And then the further up we have gone on the seamount, it seems like most of the animals are more stationary. Do you have any idea why that might be? Uh, probably because the currents are more sluggish at the base. Can you get a little rotation on that, please? Yep. Yeah, I guess we'll take it. It's got some nice angles yeah. to it. Yes. Never know until we cut it open. That's the attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Just collect lots of rocks. Exactly. Uh, okay, go away. Um, and this is going starboard? Starboard box in one of the small compartments, and we have, what do we have open? B, C, or D. So, uh, switch your cameras. Uh, sorry, um, get uh, one more starboard uh, camera up there. Um, Bravo, Charlie Delta. About 10 to 15 centimeters. Yeah. Size estimate, Beautiful. Inc. Okay. And uh, you can 10 open to it up. 15 centimeters, uh, flat and angular rock. Tool tray out. Yep. Or oh, sorry, not tool tray. Uh, sample tray. Zero six four question mark. <laughs> question mark. Yes. Thank you. Exclamation point. You said Bravo Charlie Delta? Yes. Roger, Roger.
Как как? <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> is that so close. This is Char. This is Charlie. There we go. <laughs> what did you say, Samantha? Me? Oh, I I just echoed the sentiment of, come on. <laughs> <laughs> somebody said this is something. Oh. Nope. I'm hearing things. Thank you. Are we good for here for now? Uh, I think so. Keep on moving up. Okay. Roger. Okay, RV, you ready to move? I'm ready, yes. Science ready to move? Sounds good. Science good? Yep. Great. Bridge now. Uh, three zero meters, one, two, zero. As we continue to make our way up this unnamed seamount, we are at 1,772 meters. Oh, That's cool. Is that wow. like a... Yeah. A con uh, Colossendiid, in the family Colossendiidae. I think I might have put too many consonants in there. Or vowels. Colossendius. Is this also known as a sea spider? Yeah, or a pycnogonid, or uh, an antiquated term is a, a pantopod. Um, pantopod? Pan pantopod. Pantopod. Yeah, okay. that's not not valid anymore, I think. Yeah, it really looks like a spider. And they yep. do they have do they actually have eight legs too? Uh, Raj. Yeah, they are a little bit different, uh, though, than your subaerial spiders. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine, yes. Steve. <laughs> he had a taste. <laughs> I, I only with apply it in the most opportune of moments. Oh, yeah. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> uh, so they have tissues that cover their... Um, whole body so they have no uh, real gas exchange organs like for breathing so all of the oxygen they obtain is through tissues across their uh, t across their tissues via diffusion hmm. um, and their body cavities are extremely small all of their legs are basically full of gonadal material you know when they're reproductive hmm. um, and that. they have a large proboscis that they can slurp up uh, prey items Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm very confused about what's going on with this sponge. It's not look well. Oh, 
Oh, Pentapod is a still a valid taxonomic rank. Yeah, we've gotten some really good footage in recent years of those uh, animals eating everything. They they eat everything. Uh, the sea spiders. Here. Yeah. Except animals with um, like crustaceans, like hard hard parts, hard tissues. Uh, but anything that has soft tissue that's exposed, they can slurp it up. Sea cucumbers. Anemones. An anemones. Wow. Corals. Does it take them years to eat too? Or good question. I don't. I don't know if they have good data on that. I know though that um, some sites, uh, particularly on the New England seamounts, were revisited after sea stars were observed eating a coral, and years later they observed the same sea stars and the same coral. So that's how we know it's years. Uh, potentially, they could spend consuming. Yeah, flat trap. Is there any laboratory experiments that can? try to recreate that process? Um, I suppose, yeah, you would have to have a, a very efficient cold no. room, um, unless you had uh, samples from shallower depths. Um, but generally, uh, you, you'll probably have similar functionality if you sample uh, corals and uh, sea stars uh, or predators from under a thousand meters depth because sure. the pressure is yeah. less of a um, problem. While they don't have gas sinuses that would expand, um, pressure does have a strange effect on protein folding at extreme depths. People are saying the sea here. sponge. Oh, I'm sorry, were you going to say more? No, no, I was just looking at the what that associate was in the bottom of the Ritagorgia colony. They're usually at the tops. Sorry, the sea spider. They're saying it's a the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> that was a big one. It definitely was larger than 10 centimeters. Uh, looks like an ophiroid. Oh, no, it's a... Yeah, yeah it's an ophiroid. Okay, good. Good. Very nice, Aridogorgia. <laughs> yep, Magnus Borellis. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, this move is ending. Um, would we like to continue? I think so. Yep. Keep moving, Keep RV. Yeah. Moving. Bridge nav. We can do another three zero meters, one two zero. Okay, Steve, we made it past waypoint four, so. Awesome. We'll uh, leave here as as pictures. Having gone, <laughs> we see our total distance. <laughs> Can't wait All right, to hear we, it. we did. Made, we, we made respectable time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Where's waypoint three? Uh, back here. We started down here. Squad lobster. Squad lobster. I really wish we could have that song mm -hmm. playing in the background each time. I know it's rock lobster, but still. Well, if you like that song, you haven't heard nothing yet. <laughs> oh boy, what does that mean? I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> It's not for SPL. So I think um, this is the coral colony we collected a few days ago, uh, the large um, full colony, but this is a, another association. So 
we have a pretty good documentation of that colony since we've collected it, but we'll take some cool. nice some images and move on. Okay. Yeah, we've gone less than 400 meters in three hours. <laughs> but there's a lot to see. <laughs> it's about the journey, I, not the destination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't quite hear you there. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we've gone less than four. Okay, you're <laughs> right it out, Samantha. <laughs> Do you want me to hold up a sign? I <laughs> know uh, we'll keep we'll keep moving. I mean, we've gotten way more rocks than any other watch, so take that. I believe that was promised before the watch started. <laughs> Wasn't that a promise made near the coffee yeah. machine today? <laughs> to do get what? All, to get all the rocks. Oh yeah, well of course. Can you really be really held to promises made before the coffee machine? No. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that is an existential question. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. Mm. What are promises anyway? <laughs> <laughs> what is coffee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we? <laughs> I think they're really weird. <laughs> what are thoughts before <laughs> coffee? <laughs> Nice what will future us think about this conversation? Remember, <laughs> remember, I, cal I, I calculated, I, like uh, <laughs> I calculated an average speed of 215 meters per hour. So that's generous. As long as we're positive meters per hour. <laughs> uh, so there's a uh, so this is the Rodana Ritigorgia they sampled earlier. Nice. Um, so I'm glad we got some pieces of that because that, it's a pretty rare colony at this site, but it's probably probably a new uh, species. Good uh -huh. to Oh, yeah, what's inside there? Interesting. Let's go see. Shrimps, mostly. And you're saying this is probably a new species? Yeah, it's um, it's been sampled um, before in various places, but the description's never been published yet. Cool. And we cool. did sample it earlier in the dive, too. Um, on average, about how many new species of deep sea organisms are we finding when we're going on these dives? Oh, that's a good question. There is a website um, that shows that data, but I, I don't recall it right now. Uh, deep sea coral species per year? Uh, it's probably in the maybe 10 to 20 per year. I would say it's quite for, a bit. For, for for corals. Yeah. Yeah. Light years under ten, and uh, maybe if we have a big monograph or something that's published, maybe maybe up to twenty. It's a nice one. And what about new species of rock? <laughs> <laughs> Every few billion years. <laughs> What was that? Every few billion Every years. Every few billion years, all right. Or I guess maybe whenever there's a meteorite. Yeah, uh, most of those are pretty well classified as well. All right. Um, Won't even let me have that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even Martian meteorites. Martian meteorites. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the plot. <laughs> okay, uh, science, do we want to keep moving here? Uh, that's correct. Yep. Okay. Good for ROV. Keep moving. Yeah. Bridge nav. 
Three zero meters, one two zero. Go for zoom. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you, you got it. Cool. Well, these are ophiocanthid uh, brittle stars on a dead, looks like bamboo coral stalk axis. And then there's also a small little apelicopter in right there. Another type of coral predator. Hmm. Oh, there's a swimming, uh, I see it in the camera, but if you tilt up, he's a swimming crinoid. Oh yeah, I see it. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, orient yourself. I'm trying to orient myself. Uh, here. Oh, that right there? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, it's crawling away. It's swimming. See you coming, Steve. Cool. A really nice shot of it. Yeah, uh, if you look in the, uh, for our online viewers in camera three, channel three, you can see the crinoid we're talking about. This is definitely one of my favorite animals. That's beautiful. It's kind of like trying to survive the first semester of grad school, just <laughs> boiling. <laughs> <laughs> but still you sinking. can do it, buddy. <laughs> I did have a good graduate not, school education, though. I, yeah, I did that not bad. look that good when I was flailing at my first year of grad school. Yeah. Not as good as that crinoid. No, nowhere near. <laughs> definitely as flaily. Not as good. I was also definitely just as flaily. Same energy, just didn't look as good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, all right, we're good with the crinoid. We can move. Bye, crinoid. Good luck on your thesis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had hermit crabs last night going to school, crinoids, <laughs> working on their thesis. Very educational down here in the depths. I wonder what they're studying. Geology. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of geology might they study? Oh, uh, we're not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> sorry, subject. Yeah. <laughs> They've all got to be mineralogists, though. Like they're super <laughs> sure. close up, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And they go back way, way back in the fossil record. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh hereditary. How, how old are crinoids? Old. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's easy to tell. I mean, I suppose you could date. <laughs> you can probably carbon date the I'm ossicles. Not the critter, but the like the category. Oh, uh, ancient, yeah. They're like buried like millions and millions of years old? Yeah, I would say Cambrian, pre-Cambrian, yeah. How many millions What's pre-Cambrian or Cambrian? When did the Cambrian era start? Pre-Cambrian, uh, Cambrian explosion was 500 million years ago? Yeah, so at least that. I know it's probably at least closer to six. 250. Yeah, 500. So this is um, this is a primnoid. It's probably Candidella helminthopfera, which is one of the most abundant large fans of this dive so far. It is very widespread, uh, and we see it all over the Central Pacific. And Nick, the Cambrian explosion wasn't an actual explosion, right? This is something <laughs> different you're talking about. Yeah. So the Cambrian explosion uh, is about 540 million years ago. Um, is an explosion of life, uh, not a physical <laughs> boom. <laughs> boom. Not yeah. like the explosion 65 million years ago, uh, which wiped out a lot of life um, and the dinosaurs. It's the opposite of a mass extinction, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. And the Cambrian explosion would have been the thing that gave us chordates? Um, Possibly. Uh, I, all I know is uh, I don't know much about the biology, but I know that it was an explosion of complex life uh, okay. as opposed to mostly the single-celled organisms. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So it gave us most of the things. Yeah, uh, the single-celled organism fossil record goes back uh, billions of years, uh, and then there was a long hiatus before uh, we saw complex life in the fossil record. Oh, 
We're finishing a move here. Do you want to keep going? Uh, yeah. Nods all around. Perfect. Yeah. Bridge nav. We can add another three zero meters to one two zero. Sunrise today is beautiful. I just stepped outside for a second because I had an eyelash I had to get out of my eye. And <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Did yeah. the sunrise help? Yeah, it did. I uh, I also feel an eyelash coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have an eyelash too. Yeah, it's gorgeous out so there. So be down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the four to eight watch. Unfortunately, we uh, sunset and sunrise are know, it's problematic. Right. <laughs> We've got wire cam. Yeah, yeah. would it help? Would, yeah, uh, you, yeah, would that make anybody else feel better? Yeah. There you go. Clouds. It's beautiful. So pretty. Anything good on bow cam? I know it's the wrong direction, oh. but colors. What a lovely question. Uh, yeah, true. Let's see. Gorgeous. Great this call. Is the exact right direction. Oh, it's nice. It's like the opening oh, scene yeah, from, sure uh, from Top Gun. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, we're pointed due east. So Logan, beautiful. can you play the theme uh, for Top Gun, please? <laughs> I'll oh, cue it right up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> May have regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Could just be the camera, but this might be one of the best sunrises we've no, had. No, for sure. Yeah, seriously. Like, I was considering staying out there a little bit. That good, longer. huh? Are we going to open the vans in the door? Yeah. yeah. Actually, um, I don't think this one actually. Looks like you might have a latch up there. What are our contours on height pack? Are they 100 meters or 50 meters? Uh, stand by. Yeah. Let's find out. I thought they were 100, but um. Whoop. Our last waypoint should be in the 17 range. 1700. Uh, waypoint five. Uh, yeah. It's 800 meters. 880 from where we currently are. Yeah, the depth of it. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think you're right. What was the question you were asking? What, what are the <laughs> contour <laughs> intervals? Oh, okay. Contours are, um, uh, okay. 100. Let me just look at the layer instead of trying to guess. Okay, for zoom. <coughs> Contours are 100 meters. Okay. So maybe a, a little bit shallower than we uh, expected. It's a good anemone. It's a hormothea anemone. It's very tall. They're harder to sample, like we were saying before, they, they're really sticky to the rock. Uh, and sometimes if you try to sample them, it ends up tearing them off. Um, Don't want that. Yeah. 
And it, they're, they're much larger than they look, especially the, the more fleshier ones often take lots of alcohol to preserve. Um, so we usually take a small clipping for DNA and ethanol and then formalin preserve the rest for structure, morphology. Oh, such a beautiful zoom. That part in the mouth, is, uh, in the mouth there, <laughs> yeah, is the, the mouth is is the center, yeah. Um, <laughs> brain, what? yeah, brain's not not in gear yet. The anemone um, does not have brains. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So, these types of animals are. Uh, all cnidarians, so that they all have these stinging cells uh, that allow them to capture their prey, much like the corals we see in the environment around us too. So the coral that we're seeing, they also have stinging cells? Yep. Most of them? All of them. Or all of them? By definition. Oh, okay. But just if we were to touch the coral, they may or may not sting, or we may or may not feel the sting because the stingers um, might not be strong enough to penetrate our skin. Right. Okay, got it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've never felt a sting by a deep sea coral. Yeah, ever. but they do have yeah. stingers, technically. Makes so sense. You do feel the siphonophores, though. The deep yeah. water siphonophores are painful. Oh, Nick. Yes? <laughs> We're getting a rock question. <laughs> uh, so we have a class in Orlando. Hello, Elan Orlando. Um, their class is wondering, what is the composition of the rocks that we're seeing? Sure, yeah. So these rocks are what we call mafic composition rocks. So mafic mm -hmm. is short for uh, magnesium and ferric uh, or iron. Um, they have a relatively low silica content, about 40 to 50% silica, uh, which is uh, basically quartz, uh, as opposed to rocks that you'll find uh, in a continental setting. Good. Uh, <laughs> good. Very good. Uh, which are going to be uh, not mafic, they'll be felsic, uh, which is going to have a, ho uh, a lot more um, silica, uh, as well as... Uh, Diffusion. Uh, potassium and sodium uh, content and that is basically just a function of um, magma evolution um, as magma chambers or uh, the mantle evolves over time it tends to differentiate elements based off of composition can we zoom uh, to the lower right there was um, lo to the lower right of this coral there was kind of a, a stalk that had a bunch of stuff on it I'm just curious what kind of other life might be attached there. Go for zoom. This is something we often overlook as just like a, a dead stalk, but it can, oh, is there, it's not dead. It's, uh, it's got some live branches to it. And I think I see some, maybe a hermit crabs midway up the stalk. Oh, they're tiny. Or snails, I'm not sure. It's some sh some sort of shelled animal. It could be a barnacle, too. Okay. Bronwyn, shout out to you from Makana Road. Wow, look at the sunrise. And I know, it's just... If anybody's curious, the sunrise yeah. is still gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for the sunrise update. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Set us on sunrise. 
sun has. And really? the way that the light was like hitting the clouds, so we're seeing the what, the front part of the sunrise, I don't know, the, but the back part of it, like on the back of the ship, it was like hitting the clouds and they were Thank glowing. You, Beautiful. Shout so, out to Rob so if he's pretty. listening. Oh, Rob's probably oh, outside watching that. the sunset. Yeah. Sunset? Sunset. Oh, nice. Yep. Sunrise. First sunrise. <laughs> yeah. That's Somewhere out the, there. <laughs> the, the inverse sun, sunset. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is a Euplectella sponge, Pro probably in the genus Euplectella, actually. Uh, actually, it could be different. Um, this is a furry sponge. It's got to stay warm down there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Moving on. Yeah, those are glass fibers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just completed a move. Completed a move. Steve, are those hairs for like increased filtration capture? That's a really good question. Um, I've seen that a lot on glass sponges. I don't know what they do. Um, Make it fancy. Yeah. I think, uh, I'm not sure if they're spicules or, well, they are spicules, but I'm not sure uh, if they have an anatomical name. Uh, for example, on Walteria sponges, though, oh, really nice uh, bamboo coral there. On, on Walteria sponges, so that's the one that is narrow and has these long projections. They're called lateralia. Um, and they often support other animals, um, like tinafores, uh, other associated animals that live on the branches. While uh, Herc is pulling ahead of Atalanta, science, is there anything we'd like to do here? Requiring a stop? Uh, negative. Rudder. Another move. Okay, yeah. I was just trying to get like good pictures in there, but I'll come up by half meter. Dictialis. Dictialis. That was that previous sponge. I think. Okay, are you ready for a move? Yes. Bridge now. Could have been Rigadrilla too. Three zero meters, one two zero. There's a bunch of photos that are ambiguous here. So Lots far. of opportunity in sponge biology if anyone's interested. For our friends online, um, this is the 4 to 8 crew. We have about 30 minutes left of our watch before we switch over to the 8 to 12. If you have any questions or anything that you did not get answered yet, send them on over. You should be able to find a chat box um, below the video feed. You can enter in whatever you want, send it over. Currently, our depth is 1,739 meters, and the temperature of the water is 2.6 degrees, so almost one degree warmer than where we were when we first started the dive last night at a depth of 2,900 meters. And again, we are currently exploring an unnamed seamount near the Johnston Atoll region. This dive uh, is probably going to be about 20 to 24 hours long. So we started at uh, 1600 yesterday, or shortly after 1600. So lots of lots of time down here in the depths. Yeah, it's the slope's moderating a bit. Um, so I imagine. Uh, towards the end of this watch, as well as the next watch, they'll move briskly through uh, the summit. 
Uh, waypoint five is the summit. Um, waypoint six is a small depression that seems to have um, lower backscatter, uh, so it might be sedimented and potentially contain you know, bits and crusts of bits of crust, crusty nuggets, um, or nodules, and something that we wanted to take a look at also. But it's a, a fairly fairly flat uh, up here, mm -hmm. rising only about mm, 100 meters over the next half a kilometer. Good for zoom. So somebody's wondering, how does microfauna different at this depth versus other depths and regions? Microfauna? Yeah. Is that um, I, I'm assuming okay. that that's Come kind on. of in reference to things Thanks. that might live in in or on the sediment. Um, we really don't know. We've, we've taken a lot of push core samples of the sediments uh, that focus on um, trying to find animals or uh, shells of animals that may be in the sediments. Um, we don't really have the tools to do that and make that comparison with Hercules, but uh, all the samples we take can be examined for things like that when, um, when we get them back to shore. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, uh, the, the macrofauna and, and smaller animals are probably going to be residing in the sediments. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the capacity to really look at them even with the cameras that we have uh, on the harder substrates. It's a bunch of cup corals right here. Can we zoom here on these cup corals? Oh yeah, there's a little collection one, of them. One, two, three, yeah. I love cup corals. They want to do a collection coming up in the next few meters here, just as a heads up. A collection of these things that you just circled? Yeah, I was. I wanted to take a look here. I'm specifically looking at this one in the back. Uh, okay. It's kind of long and thin stalk cup coral. I've seen dozens of them so far, and we haven't collected any cup corals, so we may want to use our slurp uh, jar. Like a, like a scrape and slurp? Yeah, it's, they're super fragile. Oh, so okay. You probably wouldn't even need to knock it oh, okay. much. We are just about to finish a move, so could be good timing. So there's three here. One here, one here, and one here. Okay, go for zoom. That's great, Steve, because it does fit into our uh, last half hour of the dive, which is typical for... <laughs> uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> okay, so that this is uh, just a base of something. Can you tilt up? Yeah, I would like I would like to sample this. Okay. Um, yeah, as close to the bottom as possible, so uh, not sure what the best way of doing that is, but yeah. That um, we can try the scrape and slurp. Yeah. It, they're very, very lightweight, so okay. it shouldn't have any mass to it, hardly at all. But this is a different kind of cup coral than we've observed on other dives, and I've seen this long, uh, long pedestal very um, conical calyx shape a lot this dive. So first thing, you can just flush it so it's ready to go. Uh, can we, and if I can, can we see what's in jar five? There, so We have an indication that there might be some okay. debris from a previous collection, but I just wanted to check. Yeah, but There's a tiny piece of a uh, something in there. Um, since we know this is not from this dive, and we can tell coral bits apart, I'd like to reuse jar five for this. Okay. Oh man. Sorry, love. 
And um, after we try this, we'll take a Niskin bottle too. Roger that. Can you tilt down a more with the Zeus? Oh. Is that good? Yeah, and a little zoom. So Steve, you're trying to get this particular cup coral um, because you're saying it's unique how tall it is? Or yeah, so uh, it has a very large uh, pedestal and a very uh, long conical calyx. I have a strong suspicion of what it is, and I'll write it in the chat so we can spell it. But it's probably a flabellid in the flabellidae family. Mm -hmm. um, possibly in the genus Jobania. Um, but uh, cup corals are almost impossible to determine to species. No, I would say they're impossible to determine to species without collection uh, because a lot of the taxonomically important characters are embedded right, are in happy? the calyx. Yeah, go for uh, suction. That's 40%. Okay. Am I too uh, far away? No, you're fine. Uh, oh. Can you just pan over a little bit? Yes. I want to make sure I can see down the tube. And then a little... So pan down? Uh, sorry, pan uh, just so he can get a, a zoom. Just center the oh, yeah. coral up a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, and a little bit more zoom. Perfect. Thank you. Logan, we're getting a request for a jar cam on channel three. Can't One do. more section, please. Thank you. Yep. yep. There we go. Nice. Beautiful. Uh, video, can you there go it is. There it is. All right. Yep. Section off. All right. Timing. There you go. Off. That happens. They often break apart like that. It's not a big deal. Uh, we'll just note that there's two pieces, uh, and it broke apart at the pedestal. But that's not a big deal. And we'll just super glue it back together. Can you show me no, I'm the kidding. Um, yeah. 065? Yeah, Question mark? Yes. Great. Try another strategy. <laughs> Adelana, stop moving, by the way. Thank you.
Is that all we need for them right here? I think we were gonna do a Niskin. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Okay, what Niskin numbers do we have? Three. Uh, three is the only one? No, but it's the next in it's order. It's the good one, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> or two or one. Um, okay, uh, so, Can you uh, retract the, yeah. I always forget about that like extra axis. So yeah, really yeah, cool. yeah, totally. I forget about it a lot too. I'm like, why am I driving around looking at the porch all the time? <laughs> and that's it, that's the reason. Um, also, it has a pretty big impact on the pressure in, um, in the res. Uh, because oh. it's, there's a significant volume in that ram. What is the altitude so you can change, of you can, So, um, like in the notes here, I'll often record like yeah, whether, the, whether it's extended or retracted oh. because it'll yeah, make a difference in 0. that. Five or that's one meter. Idea. It's not. We're on the bottom, so it's okay. Okay, so three is our next one. Yes. And can I get down lights too? Yes. We'll probably pull an eDNA sample from here. All the lights are on. Do you want to leave oh, the okay. down lights off? It's uh, primarily down for on is good. Uh, um, carbonate chemistry. Can you pan up so I can see a little more? And you're looking all the way over? Yeah, that's all the way. It's right the way left. So, Steve, if you're doing an eDNA sample specific to carbonate chemistry, is that... Video, can you give me some iris that that's going to be favorable to seeing um, where I'm... Where my are? Coral? Please. Yes, I can. It's a, two different types of sampling we do. That's great, with the thank same you. water. Yep. Uh -huh. they're, they're not related. Oh, okay. Carbonate chemistry tells us what the, um, what the uh, saturation of uh, carbon, uh, calcium carbonate is in the water, and specifically we're after aragonite here. Um, oh, okay which is what makes up the skeletal composition of these corals. That's it. Got it. Nice. Good bottle. And then maybe one more thing, just a, a visual before we leave, not with the arm. like to zoom here on the crab that's okay. in this uh, coral. Oh, no, sorry, this coral. That coral, okay. Yeah. No problem. Steve, are there any applications for uh, stable okay, isotope chemistry uh, with corals or anything in the modern marine setting? Because we use them often uh, to uh, record paleo temperatures. I wonder. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're used to date uh, um, coral rubble. Um, it's been used. Uh, actually, um, <laughs> I, I've had some pushback from geologists in the past, but. Uh, about why this is applicable, but uh, corals, uh, some sclerotinian corals have already have also uh, used uranium dating. Uh, yeah. And I'm not sure what they were after, oh, um, but the sorry. age of the colonies were on the order of hundreds of years old. Um, and, oh, can we also zoom uh, here? The little guy. Yeah, I didn't okay. see them. This looks very similar to one we collected like on that sponge on the last dive. So that we're looking for two things here. We're looking at um, the presence of polychaete worms on the black coral, this to the right, the bathy bathies, um, which I don't see any. Uh, and we're also trying to look at the morphology of the crustaceans. Two, ki two kinds of squat lobsters from two different families, I think. Uh, so this is a unit opposite and this is a, a, is it chirostylid? I think it's a chirostylid. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, looks good to me. Amazing. So I'll put the IDs for those uh, in the chat. ROV pilots, um, you have some fans in the chat. They're wondering about uh, what is what are the biggest challenges you face when piloting ROVs, and what was the learning process like? You want to take this? <laughs> wow. Well, I think um, you know it's it's really important to have a good spatial awareness when when piloting the ROV, knowing where the vessel is knowing where any like subsea assets are, like platforms or um, manifolds or, uh, you know, sea mounds or cliffs or whatever. Um, so having a good spatial awareness, knowing where your TMS is at all times in relation to the ROV, I think that's, um, that's a interesting challenge. Gabby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think exactly what Karen said, being able to build it's also the most fun part, but being able to build a 3D sort of model of the scene in your head, knowing to know where everything is, but you're doing it all sure. from like flat imagery and from data, you know, the headings of various things and the, the distances and the, yes, yeah, so you get ranges and bearings and depths and altitudes, and you have to sort of assemble all these things into a into a scene in your mind and navigate it safely. It's kind of like the big puzzle of it, and it's also one of the most fun parts of it. Does it take a while, Gabby, to kind of, uh, or Karen, uh, to kind of adjust to that depth perception with the ROV arm when you're trying to collect a sample? I would say that was a big part of the learning process for me. Yeah, but I think having multiple camera angles is really good for getting that depth perception. Um, you can also, like, you touch things uh -huh. in the scene, and then you start to be able to realize where they are. Uh, Whether it's behind or Like, in front. If, you, if you take the arm and you, like, touch a rock, then you're like, oh, I know where that is now. Sure. It's kind of like, it's the appropriate reception you use with your hands, too. Um, like, if your eyes are closed, you don't have as good of a sense. You have some sense because you have some sort of internal awareness of it, and we actually kind of have the same sort of thing with the arm. We have these potentiometers that actually tell, actually know in space where the arm is, but they're hard to read, and you tend to get it wrong if you just read those. So you kind of operate it almost like your own arm. Clear for Zoom. That's so cool. Thanks for explaining that. Yeah. I mean, I think when people design these things, they're working off of biology, whether they mean to or not. It's like embedded into us to, to understand how to manipulate our world with robots the way we manipulate it with our own bodies. So things tend to take on a like biomimic, biomimicry sort of form. Like it's an arm, it looks like an arm. Maybe there's a better way to do it. We didn't design an octopus tentacle. <laughs> right. True. And it has the same amount of joints, right? As a human arm? Similar. Or similar, not yeah, same very number, similar. But yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Wrist, elbow, mm -hmm. shoulder. There's a few uh, anthropomorphic features. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's easy for us to sort of learn how to operate that again. And it's easy, it's probably the first thing that comes to mind when you're trying to design it, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Uh, that's, all, that's all conjecture on my part. I am not. Um, a biomimetic engineer or anything, merely an operator, wonder, but yeah, I think makes so. Makes you wonder if, if, if you could think outside of the box, what would be the most efficient? efficient oh use, yeah, yeah, I wonder that all the time. I mean, tentacles are pretty good at getting yeah. getting into things, opening things. Yeah, they're also hard to engineer, I think. I know. Yeah. But if we're, if we're doing yeah. moonshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be cool if we had like an arachnid-shaped <laughs> yeah. Well, didn't uh, isn't like 
somebody developing a sonar that looks such like a, a terrifyingly gigantic snake that slithers huh. through the water. Interesting. What? That's a sonar. Yeah. Wow. I was going to say soft robotics is really big right now, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Inflating and deflating. Yeah, the, and well, the, the stuff we have here on this vehicle is is pretty like mature engineering. Like, it's been around a while. Um, nice that is a that. great word. <laughs> <laughs> that was so diplomatic. Very generous. <laughs> I, I no, I think that's right. It, I it think is. That's what it is. Like it's it's sort of like reached its zenith. Like yeah. we know how it works. We know how to fix it. Yes, it's also funny. Could just call it old. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 not necessarily that because you can buy Classic. a brand new craft arm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's it's and mature. It's, it's like a yeah. And that's it, it. it, you know, known known to work well, yeah, exactly. reliable. That's that's what I'm going for. Vintage. <laughs> it's that, vintage. I say that about myself. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So like, the you're probably gonna start to pull here. So. The Thanks. things on this vehicle are all sort of mature engineering. The vehicle is like 20 years old or so. Um, so like, then you talk about like next generation vehicles, and those are the ones using the new tech. Um, Mm. And uh, and you know that'll have some of these ideas more integrated. Is is there an example of a next generation vehicle or something that is known about widely I or in, in development? You no, know, I think you. I I don't know. Mm. I know that they're out there. I think you probably have to Good be working morning. at Schilling or Oceaneering or one of the one of the companies that designs that sort of stuff, um, or at you know a robotics university. And I'm out of the loop. I don't yeah. know, Karen, do you know anything about next-gen vehicles? Is it, are they autonom autonomous? Is that next-gen technology? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if really that's the future that they're, to some degree, there's a lot more, they're a lot more stable for sure. Mm -hmm. um, they more, they're more powerful. Um, I heard some are starting to use like QR codes to stabilize against like a platform, but huh. that's interesting. And yeah. that would be like for industry style stuff. Yeah. Um, arms that know more about the space that's around them um, and how to get to where they're supposed to be. To There's also a lot of work going into technology to explore ocean worlds on um, moons in the solar system or Yeah, and that would have planets. to be more yeah. autonomous. Yeah, um, exactly. But still, like, our input makes things better yeah. when it comes to exploration because there's so many unknowns. All our rovers are directed very carefully. Yep. Yeah, we hosted a team on Nautilus um, a few years ago from NASA uh, for the subsea program, and they were studying both the um, hydrothermal vent systems as analogs to uh, ocean worlds and other planets, but um, and Enceladus. Um, but they were also studying the way that humans communicated with each other when. Um, operating vehicles uh, remotely. So it's an interesting two-prong project. Looks like his watch changed him. Yeah. Ship is fully stopped, by the way. All right, so on our online viewers, it is time for us to go ahead and make our watch change. Um, so this was the four to eight crew signing out. Next is the eight to 12. So Stephanie is gonna be coming on the microphone here in just a moment as we switch out. Thanks so much for joining us. See you again soon.
Hello, Ooh, there. Huh. That's interesting. And yeah. that would be like for industry style stuff. Yeah. Um, arms that know more about the space that's around them um, and how to get to where they're supposed to be. To There's also a lot of work going into technology to explore ocean worlds on um, moons in the solar system or Yeah, and that would have planets. to be more yeah. autonomous. Yeah, um, exactly. But still like our input makes things better yeah. when it comes to exploration because there's so many unknowns. Like all our rovers are directed very carefully. Yeah. Yeah, we hosted a team on Nautilus um, a few years ago from NASA uh, for the subsea program and they were studying both the um, hydrothermal vent systems as analogs to uh, ocean worlds and other planets, but um, and Enceladus, um, but they were also studying the way that humans communicated with each other when um, operating vehicles uh, remotely. So it's an interesting two-pronged project. Looks like his watch changed, Shem. Yeah. Ship is fully stopped, by the way. So on our online viewers, it is time for us to go ahead and make our watch change. Um, so this was the 4 to 8 crew signing out. Next is the 8 to 12. So Stephanie is going to be coming on the microphone here in just a moment as we switch out. Thanks so much for joining us. See you again soon.
Hello, Ooh, there. Yeah, Trevor, I think you're doing what we're going to be doing, most of this cruise, most of this watch. I'm what? Sorry? I think you're doing exactly what we're going to be doing, most of this watch. Uh, cool. You know, just kind of moving along. Let's get some uh, close-ups. There's no real big need for biology sampling unless we start to see some uh, uh, associates that are unique, and Paula can call that out. All right. And, uh, you know, maybe a rock or two, but <clears throat> looks like they have plenty already. Plenty of rocks. Plenty so of rocks. We should just. Hello, everybody. Just step or keep tracking. That's up to the back row. What do you want to do? You want to step uh, towards waypoint? Yeah, let's keep stepping toward the waypoint. Okay. Okay. At Fifty meter, five zero meters. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the eight to twelve watch. It's like we just saw you yesterday. I'm Stephanie Weinger, a sci or natural science and children's book illustrator, coming to you as an SCF aboard the Nautilus. If everyone's turtles are on a log, do you want to do introductions? Back row, wants to start? Sure. As usual. Sure, I'm Rob Colony. I'm the uh, watch leader for the 8 to 12 as well as a geologic lead uh, from the University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography. I'm a researcher there. I uh, believe the earth is flat in some places. <laughs> in some places. <laughs> and I really want uh, Bigfoot or Sasquatch to be real. And the Aqua Squatch, right? Well, that's without saying. Mm -hmm. He is real. She is. They it's are. It's real. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Paula Rodriguez. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the MCC, Harvard. I, am, I study squad lobsters, taxonomy, systematics, evolution, and I'm part of the science team here at Can I get a reset Nautilus. right there, please? Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Ron K. Right Harris. There, yeah. I am a science manager in training on board the Nautilus and off the Nautilus. I'm a yep. PhD student at the University of Victoria. I study hydrothermal vents. Thank I you. study the bacteria that live at hydrothermal vents and how their composition changes along the life cycle of vents. Front row, whenever you're ready, introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, my name is Elias Zadidion and I'm a, I'm a graduate student at the University of New Hampshire and I'm majoring in ocean engineering, ocean mapping. My research focuses on characterizing the uncertainty in interpolated bathymetry and here on board in EV Nautilus, I'm a navigator and also a mapper. Thank you. Hello, I'm Trevor. I'm an ROV person and on board I am an ROV person. I was muted. Um, hello, I'm Annabelle. Uh, I am the 
Atalanta pilot, I am the ROV intern, and I'm an undergraduate at Oregon State University studying ecological engineering. Obligatory go beeves. Get a zoom on that if you get a chance. Yep. Zooming and talking at the same time, I don't know. <laughs> Dave Robertson, lead video engineer uh, on uh, this expedition uh, and uh, currently zooming on something when uh, Trevor tells me to here. Uh, I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. Go for it there, Dave. Still a little far away. Ooh, zoanthids. Nice little diverse rock there. Zoanthids on that, looks like. Yeah. There are zoanthids growing. And what are zoanthids? All right, thank you. For the so people at home. Those are cnidarians uh, of the class Exacoralia. Mm -hmm. And they related, related with um, hermatipic corals. Mm -hmm. And I remember you guys saying before it's like a single polyp that kind of grows on another coral skeleton? Or many single polyps that grow on another coral skeleton? Uh, yeah. We saw that in the first dive. Uh, we saw a lot of swanthies growing in uh, dead colonies of bamboo corals. Mm -hmm. They were colonizing the whole colonies and sometimes. Are they considered parasites or harmful? I think they are more opportunistic, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sure if they are parasites. Okay. So, Meraki, what sort of space do we have for any samples? We have plenty of space, well, medium amount of space for rocks. We have four push cores, we have two niskins, and we have one slurp. And, a party. and corals can also go free within the bio boxes. Okay, thank you. Looks like sediment is picking up a little bit more here in the interstices. Is that what you want? No, I mean, it's. I think it's just gonna happen as we get to the top of this. but it's still surprising how little uh, sediment is on the top of these sea mounts. Are we at the top? Well, we're, we're really close. We're like maybe 400 meters. Elias, well, is that how far we okay. are? Uh, yes, to the next waypoint, which is like the top, right? Waypoint um, five before we go down again. Uh, the distance is about 700 meters. Oh, 700 meters, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're currently at 1,732 meters, so what's what's so plus seven, minus 700 would be like a thousand meters? Well, that's distance. No, that's oh, distance. distance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the depth is going to be around um, 1,700, so. Oh, okay, so yeah. we're just going far, we're not going it, 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 Just Just high. a leisurely drive. Yeah. yeah. Like the vertical difference is not much, they are just kind of going horizontally. that weight drop on the Atalanta can. Nice. How do you know when to drop the weights? Uh, based on the necessary thruster input to keep a constant depth. <coughs> Just by feel, I guess. in the chat, how long do you normally stay underwater? This dive is about 24 uh, hours. Yeah, well, it's a plan for a 24 hour dive. So we yeah. deployed yesterday at uh, four o'clock local. Yeah, and, and we stay down anywhere from like 18 to 24 yep. usually, right? Um, and then we come back up to do maintenance 
and collect all our samples, put them in the wet lab and process them. Um, and then hopefully we, we dive again once all that's squared away. Yeah, they had an interesting observation on the last watch that the, uh, the north side of this ridge or to the left tends to be more manganese encrusted, a lot more of the uh, metroidal texture. And the south side or to our right is more of a, looks like it may be a little fresher. So I'm just wondering if part of these sheet flows kind of fell away or mass wasted away. Fresher, the rocks are fresher, yeah. newer. Yeah. So if we do sample rocks, probably be preferential to the what? to the south side. That kind of answers our next question. What types of rocks are you expecting to find? What types of rocks would be the most surprising to find? How probable would finding those surprising rocks be? <laughs> That's actually a good question. I think most of the rocks we're going to see are basalts, extrusive uh, lavas. Mm -hmm. And right now it looks like it's a combination of sheet flows and pillows, which is what, what you'd expect on top of a uh, underwater volcano. Mm -hmm. uh, It'd be a surprising rock. You know, we might be able to see some carbonate, maybe. I don't know. What would uh, that look like? It would probably be a little lighter in color and probably composed of old uh, uh, coral. And uh, you could actually see the pieces of almost like a, a fossiliferous rock mm. you picked up on land. Do we ever see geodes in the rocks? There may be something similar to that. There may be openings mm -hmm. in the uh, rock, but uh, geoids are more of a, you have fluids going mm -hmm. into a void in the over time that you get crystals forming. So it's usually more of a, a land-based sort of thing. Yeah. Mineral-rich fluids. See a big crack in the rocks ahead. Paula, is this a good height for you, or do you want to be down closer? Is this a good elevation? Do you want to be closer? Um, yes, if it's possible. Yeah, of course it's possible. No problem. So you can, we can see better the details. There are tails up here. <laughs> <laughs> Fish tails. Well, these things kind of look like tails. Great view in the cinema cam. Oh, yeah. So, Rob, just a heads up, we're looking more like, uh, I think Dwight wrote on the right board, 1045 off bottom. I think we're looking at about 1030, 1035. Okay. I mean, we just uh, just briefly chatted. That was the number he gave me real quick. Yeah, totally. Back of the napkin. I mean, he's going to stop up in a little bit. <laughs> Great. We have viewers from all over the world shouting out their locations, well, Alabama, Philly, whoop, Philly, um, New York City, Czech Republic, Florida. Great to see that. Getting back to the rock idea too is, uh, <laughs> probably wouldn't see a granite here. Would you I'd be surprised if you did? I'd be really surprised. Surprising but, rock? But what we used to do is, I used to bring a piece of granite on ships and and when they'd sample, I'd throw one in just to mess with people before they were looking. Yeah, that sounds about right from you. It's hijinks <laughs> at sea, hijinks at high sea. Getting people's hopes up. Is that, what is that uh, in the, in the cinema cam? Is that a this sea one? Pad? Yeah. This is um, Chrysogorgid. Wanna zoom? Sure. Yeah, this this is patchy, like they said on the first watch, the previous watch. Go ahead, Dave. It looks like it might have an associate on it. It does. Good that. star. Oh, Furoi. So delicate. Yeah. Beautiful. That looks heavy. Cool, thanks. 
All right. Oh, I see a squat right. to the right. If you pan right, I think there's a squat. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, on the black coral. Is this a metallic orgia? It seems like. Um, squat. Okay, thanks, Dave. Metallic orgia. We have a question for the ROV pilots. During um, NA-151, which was that the Ocean Networks Canada one? I'm not yep, sure. That's right. OK, you, s you used a different attachment on the right hand on Hercules than you do now. It looked like a pair of pliers. Do you use other extensions? And for what purposes? And that Pretty was Pretty much the just Czech these Republic. two. The ones we have on now are called the coral cutters. We have the snippy built in so we can snip off just a piece of coral and not take the whole thing. And they're also really, really large so we can grab big rocks. And other than those two tasks, they're utterly useless. So <laughs> the more versatile ones are the parallel jaws, which run in A151, allows us to do a lot more fine detail tasks. And grabbing all the connectors and stuff we were doing, engineering work for that. Herc has two arms, right? Yes. So what are, what are the each one used for? Because I've only seen you use the right one. Yeah, the right one's SC, spatially correspondent. It means we have the miniature version, the controller up here. Mm -hmm. And you can move all seven functions at the same time if you are moving the arm in such a way that needs that. And the one on the port side is a rate arm. It's controlled by solenoid valves, which means it's either move or don't move instead of move slowly or move quickly, mm -hmm. which means you cannot do much fine work with it. You can only move one valve at a time. So you're moving the elbow, wait for it. Okay, now I'm gonna move the shoulder. Okay, wait for it. Now it's time for the wrist. So it's it's a lot more slow. Um, very simple, very slow. And it works great for securing us to subsea platforms such as Ocean Networks Canada or hanging on to rocks for um, stability for sampling or stuff like that. But it's not a really great sampling arm. Yeah, and we do see some ripples in the limited sediments up here too, so indicator of a strong current. Is that a stalked crinoid? Dave, you want to get a ripple zoom? See if these are in fact ripples, as you claim. Yep. I think ripples confirmed. I think it ripples confirmed. It looks like the current's coming from the upper left side of the screen to the to the right. And you can see that in the critters too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dave. They could, if they're asymmetric like that, you can often tell the direction in which they're motion moving. Yeah, nice to see you, Lily here. Ooh, it's beautiful in the cinema cam. For everybody watching at home, that's channel three. That's a real nice shot. Yeah, the color is very nice. Question in the chat is what do you what do you do with the things you collect? So science, what what do we do with all the specimens we have? So for the biology, we process right. it at the well lab, uh, take pictures of every specimen, get measures if it's um, a crustacean or mollusk or any other bilateral animal. We sex them, and all, and then. Uh, every specimen is conserved and fixed depending on the request of the scientist. So some scientists need uh